Hey everyone, I thought I would record a quick blog post this morning, vlog post, um, about the debug function in R, which is something that I think is really cool and useful. And if you're a programmer and you've come to R as a programming language, you probably already know about this. But if you're like me and you're a scientist and you use R primarily as a statistical tool, um, this is maybe something you don't know about, but I think it's really useful. Especially in the situation where, let's say you've downloaded a new R package for your work and it feels a little bit like a black box. You're not really sure, you're confident what the functions are doing. Um, you, don't really, you don't really feel confident in the calculations that are going on. And you wanna take a look at the code. You wanna look at what's going on under the hood. So the debug function is a great way to do that. So we're gonna use as our example, the ANOVA function from the car package. Let's say that's the thing we're not really sure about. We wanna, we wanna look into the, the code and look under the hood. Um, so I'll start by lo uh, loading the library, uh, car package, oops, not car data, car. And I'm just gonna make an example um, model, linear model for ANOVA to use. Um, so miles per gallon as a function of cylinder number uh, in the empty cars data set. Cool. So now if we run ANOVA on M, right, we get an output. But this is the thing we're saying, we're going, ah, where did these numbers come from, right? How's it doing this? So what we can do is run debug on ANOVA. And we're putting it in there without any quotation marks or parentheses, just the name of the function unquoted. And it looks like nothing happens and, and nothing prints, but what it does is it changes the behavior of the ANOVA function. So now when we run it again, something different's gonna happen. So now we're gonna run ANOVA of M one more time and something different happened, right? A few things happen. One, we've got this new tab here with the magnifying glasses or the binoculars, whatever that is, um, that says ANOVA. And so we're actually looking into the code for the ANOVA function over here. Another thing that changed is the environment chat tab. Now we're looking at not our, our global environment with all our analyses and, and objects in it. We're looking at only what the function knows about. All it knows about is M, which is what, that's the only argument we gave it. That's the only thing we in input. So that's new. And our console has changed. Now it says this browse thing here, and we've got new buttons. So a lot has changed. What these buttons allow us to do is walk through the line of code, lines of code of our ANOVA function one at a time. So I'm gonna use this next button, and we'll see that now we've stepped inside of these curly braces. Now, ANOVA is what we call a generic function in R because it doesn't do anything itself other than figure out what kind of object you have and then call something else. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next and see what happens. So now I'm inside of ANOVA.LM. This is the specific function that actually works on LMs. And we have our environment over here and we can see um, some objects, some values in the environment and as I'm gonna click next for these first few lines, these look like they're just um, kind of checking that the defaults are okay and that the, you know, the arguments you gave it are the right type and all that. So I'm just gonna click through that, but you can watch this environment window and see how it changes. So we're actually you know, changing things in there, creating new things, and um, we can actually interact with those things in the console. So down here, I, if I wanna know, you know what one of these objects is, like type, I can type it out and it'll, uh, oops, it'll return the value. And I can even run, do functions in here like is.null white.adjust, right? And I can peer into the values that are being created right in the middle of this function. Um, and I can go step by step and figure that out. So now here we're inside of, you know, an, an if uh, statement and skipped that one and here's another if statement and here's another if statement and now we've gotten to the bottom and we see that whoa actually this doesn't do anything other than figure out which one of these functions to call so now it's actually going to call anova.2.lm because type equals two so I want to know what that one does um, and I can jump into that function by using this button here so step into the current function the second button over here so if I click on that, now I'm inside of ANOVA.2.LM and I can look over here at this traceback thing. This is the rabbit hole that we've gone down, right? We started looking at ANOVA M, now we're looking at ANOVA.LM of M 
And now we're looking at, or before we were, and now we're looking at anova.2.lm with these arguments. <clears throat> and we've got our you know, values up there again, our environment. We can click through this, step through it one step at a time. We can see that it's creating new objects, even functions that are in this space. And if I want to investigate these, like I said before, we could type it out in the console. We can also click on something over here in the environment tab, right? So if I want to look at this mod object and see what it is, it opens up a new tab where I can, you know, look at all the pieces of it and, and you know, investigate it even further if I want. And um, at any time when we, you know, want to know what something does, uh, let's say we want to know what this has.intercept function does, we can step into it. So now we're another level deeper. And once that level is sort of finished, after we go through that level, it brings us back to the previous level. So that's where we were, we were just inside of this has.intercept function, and now we're back out. And we can keep going step by step, and we can look at things like here we've got a matrix that's created. We can say, oh, okay, you know, I understand what it's doing now, or you know, that's not right, that's fishy, that's not exactly what I want out of this uh, function. And uh, if we're satisfied, we can hit continue and it'll go through the rest of it, or we can hit stop to just end it. If the only difference is if we hit continue, it'll actually give us the output. Um, and if we hit stop, it'll just exit. So I can hit continue then, and you know, it'll go back here and give me my output of my ANOVA. So that's the brief intro to debug. Um, it took me a really long time to um, use it, partly because it is really intimidating the way that the everything changes on your window. But once you understand what it's doing, it's super, super helpful um, in situations where you know you need to figure out for a collaborator or your advisor or whatever, they say, I don't trust this package. What is it actually doing? You can dig into it. Um, this is just one of a few ways that you might dig into the, the, the guts of a, of a package or a function, sort of look under the hood. And so if you liked this video and you'd like to hear about other ways that you could sort of do that and make things less of a black box in R, um, let me know and I might uh, make some uh, follow-up videos or blog posts or something like that. Cool. So thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful and um, I think it's really helpful. I've used it a lot. So I hope you guys think it's helpful too. All right. Bye.